Dr. On here with DMC. Thanks for watching. We're in San Jose this week. On our program is Dan Reese. He is the Director of Regional Product Marketing at Trend Micro. And uh, Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate being here. So uh, I, I consider your company a, a household name uh, in case there's maybe a household that's new that, that just formed and maybe isn't aware of your company. You want to just give us the overview from the top? Sure. Um, we've actually been around for about 23 years, and we're one of the uh, top companies in the area of avian anti-malware. We actually were one of the original patent holders in that particular area, both from the standpoint of products that we have for consumers in their home PCs, as well as for small businesses, as well as large enterprise cloud virtual environments and such. So we have a very wide array of products um, that cover a wide array of different kinds of computing environments, you know, the whole spectrum of computing that we think has to be dealt with to be able to protect information. And what are some of the biggest challenges out there in terms of security, in terms of users, what they're not doing that they should be, whether it's corporate or individual? Yeah, that's a, it's always a tough one. Education is a primary thing that needs to continually take place, but the reality is people always make mistakes. So you have to be able to have an environment of security, both from a system standpoint as well as from data security standpoint. And there really are two different animals, um, such that if a person does make a mistake, that they don't pay a price for that. So that if they happen to go to some place they shouldn't on the net, whether they're inside the corporate or they're inside their own personal PC, that we can identify that and keep them from, if they click on that URL, you know, it's malware, we can keep it from being downloaded before it gets into their network. And, you know, we utilize what we call uh, big data in the cloud to be able to do that. And so utilizing that both from the personal standpoint, whether it's their home PC, whether it's a uh, smartphone or a tablet, and the corporate that may be using all those same elements, as well as using virtual systems to have this holistic approach to be able to protect both systems and data, we think is very crucial. Now, what about the mobile world? Are you seeing threats there increasing? Oh, absolutely. We um, actually did a uh, analysis at the beginning of this year as to what we expected to be as the number of malwares for Android specifically, and we estimated about 12,000 for the year. So far, our count, because we're actually monitoring all this traffic uh, in the cloud, out there in the Ethernet, we've counted 27,000 separate malware incidences wow. for Android alone just up to this month. So we've actually blown that number, or estimate, out by ourselves. Um, so it's real. I mean, the, the fact is that you know, a person uses a, a tablet, whether it's Android-based or whether it's a I, iOS, you know, uh, Apple, whatever the case may be, we need to have the, the environments and the systems to allow people to incorporate that into the IT environment. So having the ability to manage those systems to, if you have to, if it's lost, to be able to kill the system or to wipe it, but do it in a selective way so you don't get rid of personal data. Right. Things like that uh, are really crucial to the fact that the, uh, all of these things are now you know, in, being introduced into corporate IT. Now, uh, what about sites that have been compromised? There are so many uh, sites that through uh, SQL injection or any other ways that sites get compromised, and then people go to the site, and it's a legit site sometimes. Mm -hmm. what, what happens in that case? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting one because uh, I know of incidents, for example, of a, a major car company that had a site compromised for about five minutes. And during that five minutes, because it was showing a new car, you know, people would click on that and it would... Be re they would redirect them to a malware site, drop malware on their system, and then bring them back. So there's two areas that you really need to protect the information in those sites. One is constantly checking those sites to see that they're okay, you know, whitelisting them, but not assuming because they're whitelisted right now that in five minutes they're still whitelisted. So if somebody clicks on a URL, again, we use big data. We actually will go out and check that particular site to see whether it's good the moment that they click on that. And so we can then verify, okay, this is good. Now, if it gets, uh, has a problem and such like that, we can then block it and then check it again because of the fact if it's a valid site, it could be just a section within a particular valid site that is actually compromised, but the overall site is still good. The level of sophistication for malware writers today is, is pretty significant, and they're using what are basically targeted threats to go after particular elements within an organization and using phishing and things like that to get in. So it's having the dynamic capability to identify and block those things before it gets into the network when somebody clicks in it. But if it does get in, having the logic to be able to look for what we call anomalous behavior inside of the network. For example, it could be that that malware turns off a scanning engine because it doesn't want it looking for it. 
or it changed registries, or it has keyboard loggers. So it's looking for them doing things. So we look for these things and go, hey, time out, block that, stop that, things like that. So having those basically two levels of analysis that's going on before it gets into the network, big data out in the cloud, if it gets in the network, being able to then identify and block it from that standpoint as well. How concerned should uh, global organizations and users be that uh, the ultra sophisticated Stuxnet uh, worm, virus, malware, whatever you want to classify it as, uh, has leaked into the wild and is now being um, used as a model for hackers and malware writers and crime syndicates to potentially disable corporations or automation systems, et cetera? Well, I think that they should be concerned. Um, I look at it from the standpoint that the people that want to utilize that kind of technology are trying to do it to gather value, something that is valuable to them, that either if it's a government sponsored, that they can utilize to be able to build products within that particular area because they now have blueprints of this particular type of product and such like that that they can now build themselves and there's a strategic need or view that that government has, or if it's a cyber terrorist, which we don't see as much of because of the fact that the level of you know, skill that we see in this particular area doesn't seem to be as much in that particular aspect where they're actually just trying to blow things up versus somebody that, again, is trying to get value and so will have a targeted threat that they're trying to drop into a particular environment to slowly work its way through that environment, covering up its, its path which is what Stuxnet and Flame will actually do, cover up where it's been, you know, clean up everything so it's harder for it to be able to spot because they're specifically going after those elements of value that they can excel or utilize within their uh, area of uh, you know, interest and such like that. So Fantastic. Well, thanks for being here today. This was you great. Bet. Thanks a lot, Rich. Appreciate it.